How's it going everyone? Ben here, your friendly neighborhood medical student, transgender medical student, and today we're going to be talking about birth control options for trans masculine people and transgender men. So over the last two weeks, the really unfortunate news came out that Roe v. Wade has been overturned and it's been uh, in the back of my mind to make a video where I talk about, you know, protecting yourself as a trans masculine person from pregnancy. Uh, especially in times like this, where more conservative states are already enacting laws to prohibit access to abortion. Now, you might be wondering, what's the difference between birth control options for cisgender women versus transmasculine people uh, who have a uterus? And that is, there's a couple of birth control options that might be dysphoric for us, especially ones that contain est estrogen and uh, ones that cause increased bleeding. Because Estrogen is often a feminizing hormone and a lot of trans masculine people, whether or not they take testosterone medically, do not want feminizing features. And uh, usually for people like us, people like me, um, having a menstrual period, having any form of vaginal bleeding is extremely dysphoric for us. So today we're going to be talking about the options that trans masculine people have available to them for birth control and the pros and cons of each. I also really want to emphasize if you are anyone with a uterus and you're having sex that could potentially get you pregnant, I always advocate for as a future medical provider in the next couple of months, honestly, <laughs> because I'm a senior in medical school, that you have two forms of birth control as an extra added layer of protection. And the um, advice I usually give patients is your first a protection is your barrier protection, the condom, and the second is uh, any other birth control method that you feel comfortable with. Now, as far as with my list of things that I'm going to showcase to y'all, I'm not going to include spermicide with the diaphragm because it's not that effective compared to these other forms that have been shown to have over 90% effectiveness if they're used correctly. So the first method is the one oral pill method that you can use that I'm going to talk about and that is the progesterone pill also known as the mini pill you take this one every single day and if you are the type of person who hates the idea of something being inside your body or taking a shot the mini pill is a great way to have adequate birth control and the only hormone associated with the mini pill is progesterone now there is some talk in the trans mass community, I think mostly because there's a lack of health literacy um, in the trans masculine groups because uh, progesterone is also associated with feminine hormones, but it's not, it doesn't cause increased femininity. It actually um, decreases the amount of bleeding. It can lighten the menstrual cycle for a lot of people. So I do not, I do not emphasize that progesterone is a feminizing hormone, it's not. So make sure you know that. If you have someone that you know that believes in that, make sure that you educate them on that. Some of the cons of the mini pill, as I've said, is that it's a pill, you have to take it every day and you can't miss your doses. If you start missing doses, the effectiveness of its protection starts going down. So that's the main con that you have to know. It's also relatively affordable if you have good Rx or insurance. So that's, that's a pro too. The next option that's available to you is the, um, I can't even say it, <laughs> it's such a long word, but is the Depo Provera shot. There is a generic name for it. It starts with an M, but it is the progesterone shot. And that one is really convenient because you only have to go to the doctor every three months to get one shot and you're done. And it's really great, uh, especially for people who don't like uh, taking everyday pills and who have the time and capacity to go visit their doctor every three months. I think that's both a con and a pro. If you like going to your doctor, that's great. If you are too busy, you have a busy life, you can't make your appointments on time, then going to the doctor every three months might not be the best option for you. Also, uh, this might be a pro or con depending on who you are and what your desires are, but the, um, the progesterone shot is most associated with weight gain. It's on. It's honestly the uh, only one that has a pretty big st statistically significant evidence-based research data that shows that that the, some people may gain weight 
on this shot, but also for a lot of people, it completely stops their menstrual cycle, especially if you're not on testosterone and you're transmasculine, that might also be a benefit to you. So this one, it, it's entirely dependent on the person and they have to kind of analyze the pros and cons for their own lifestyle needs for this progesterone shot. Up next are the, um, the implant the implant options that are available to you. The first one is the uh, Nexplanon uh, subdermal implant. It's a little uh, white stick that we insert into your underarm, just under the skin. It doesn't even go into the muscle and it stays there for three years. It's super effective. The only hormone again is progesterone. So there's no estrogen involved with it. A lot of people like it. it the only con is that if you don't like something inside your body, it might make you queasy, but it can stay for up to three years. If you want to have kids at, at, at any point, uh, your doc, you could just go back to your doctor and they take it out. And uh, most people really love it. And um, it's nice because uh, a lot of people don't like something in their uterus, like an IUD. So if they're okay with another form of implant, you can always get the Nexplanon subdermal implant. A lot of people often question me about how painful is it to get uh, that little stick implanted under your skin. Honestly, I've seen the procedure uh, while I was doing my OB rotation and actually there's uh, no pain involved whatsoever. What the doctor will do is we will insert um, lidocaine anesthetic. Uh, it's a local anesthetic uh, and the only pain that you actually feel is when we are inserting the anesthetic with a needle into your arm and it, it feels like a pinch. It feels like what you would usually feel when you're getting your blood drawn at the doctor. So. There's al almost like no pain whatsoever involved with the Nexplanon implant. The other implant option that you have available to you is the IUD, which is a Y-shaped uh, device. I will put up a picture somewhere up here, but it's a Y-shaped device that goes into your vagina and the doctor will do a minor procedure at the office to insert it up to your uterus and it stays in your uterus for up to five years for the progesterone IUD. There's also a copper IUD option that lasts up to 10 years, but I actually kind of discourage this one for trans masculine people to get. And I've seen other um, trans mask doctors who are advocates, primary care advocates recommend against this because of the fact that this one, the copper IUD, even though it lasts a very long time, like up to 10 years, and the fact that there's almost no hormones involved with it because it's just copper doing the work of doing the birth control, the big side effect with it is that there's a lot of breakthrough bleeding associated with it. So you might bleed more with the copper IUD. Even if you're on testosterone, you may bleed more with this copper IUD. So it might not be ideal for a lot of us who feel that our any form of vaginal bleeding causes a lot of dysphoria. I know for me, that's the number one thing that literally makes me want to, um, you know, wither away and never exist. So, um, that's something that you should be aware of. The other forms of IUD are all progesterone based. None of them are estrogen based. So you can absolutely get them and they last up to five years. It comes with a little string attached. So if you wanna have kids at any point before those five years goes away, then you go back to the doctor and the doctor uses uh, forceps and pulls that string out and the IUD comes out with it. A big, 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 asterisk, big con to the IUD is that there's a lot of doctors out there that undermine the amount of pain that some people may experience when an IUD is inserted. So for a, a good majority of people, um, the IUD insertion will cause some discomfort, but I know quite a few amount of people, like almost every single um, person that I've talked to that had an IUD insertion told me it was one of the most painful things that they've ever gone through in their life. And that's because they went to a doctor that didn't give them any form of anesthesia when they did that procedure. So if you are thinking about getting an IUD and if you want to have body autonomy about controlling your pain is to vet the doctor who is going to do the IOD insertion, go to a doctor that will provide anesthesia, will provide either general anesthesia or local anesthesia when you are getting this IUD inserted if you are concerned about the pain associated with it. Now, there are permanent options to basically eliminating any form of fertility if you plan on never having children 
as a trans masculine people and uh, the main ones uh, obviously is uh, bilateral tubule ligation which is getting your tube cut tube cut tube tied tubes tied wow i am fumbling today but it's getting your uh tube f <laughs> it's getting your tubes tied and um that will prevent any form of pregnancy for the future and uh the next option is to do get a hysterectomy which uh, can be gender affirming for a lot of people on people's bu bucket list. So if you want to do any form of permanent sterilization, those are your two options. I know this is a lot of information, but I hope all of this information is going to be helpful for you to decide on which kind of birth control that you want to get if you are watching this video to determine what kind of birth control I want to get. I know when you're at the doctor's office, there's not a lot of time to talk about the pros and cons of each option. So that's why I'm making this video. So please, if you like this video, please like it and share it with someone who may benefit from this information. That's pretty much it for all the information I have for you. If you know of any other form of birth control that I haven't covered uh, here that is trans affirming, please post it down in the comments below and um, follow me on Instagram and my social media, Twitter, all that jazz. Um, you, you can even try and add me on LinkedIn, I guess and to follow my advocacy work and the things that i do outside of making youtube videos um and i'll see y'all in the next video Mwah. this is ben <laughs>